Hello everyone, how's it going today? Uh, so I have made it out camping. I just needed to get out. So I have gone to one of my favorite camping spots ever. Uh, it's along Hardscrabble Creek in the San Isabel National Forest in Colorado. Uh, it's just a nice little spot off the highway. Uh, so gonna spend the night camping and try to get some cool shots over the afternoon slash sunset here. Oh, feels good to have arrived at camp. Oh, God, it is just gorgeous out here. So excited for whatever happens today. I, oh God, yeah, this just feels delightful. Oh, well that makes camp all set up. So I'm gonna hang out here at camp for a while, and then after that I am gonna head out and try to find some good compositions. Uh, over the course of this video, I'll be trying to share some landscape photography tips as I go. Okay, so for tip number one, I am gonna be uh, emphasizing how much shutter speed matters when you're shooting water. So I've got my camera set to manual here, and the first shot, I, I've got aperture f9, ISO 100, and 1 8th of a second shutter speed. Okay, so I've got it up to f22, and this is, f22 is going to give me a 1 second exposure. So, let me shoot that. Uh, now I'm going to throw on a neutral density filter and go and see how long of an exposure I can get. I'm sticking with F22 and I've got a 30 second exposure with the ND filter. So I'm sorry the ND filter is a little bit on the dirty side. I'll clean it up before I do any, before I take any more pictures, but this is just an example. So for the sake of that, I wanted to shoot this anyways to, to give an example of what a 30 second exposure looks like. Uh, this way, when you're out shooting water, uh, depending on how much movement you want in the water and how much water overall you want to show, uh, it is definitely worth adjusting the shutter speed. Uh, your water shots are going to... Uh, it, it just impacts them so epically. So my next tip is going to be about the height you place your camera at and just exactly how much that can change your shot. Uh, so for this example, I have found this rock that kind of overhangs the creek. And I, what I'm doing is I'm going to shoot a shot down the creek. One from up on top of this rock and one from beneath the rock. And that way we'll be able to get a good, a really good example of exactly how much height can just change everything. Okay, so I used my ND filter to get a nice one second exposure and I have got this nice and lined up down the stream and I'm gonna shoot a shot focused just right where the stream disappears. Okay, got that one, now I'm moving to the bottom. Oh, 
Okay, so I made it down to the bottom here and completely different composition. I'm gonna shoot this again with a one second exposure uh, just to be consistent with something on this. Uh, so let's spin that in D filter and get it good. And again, I'm just gonna focus where the stream disappears. So not going for focus, more just going for not going for focus, not going for composition. Uh, this isn't going to be stellar shots, but it is purely to prove a concept and how much it matters. So here's the result of that shot, and I'll put them both side by side so you can see exactly how different they are. Okay, so I came across another little composition I like. It's just the creek being all nice and shallow and slow, and it's just really simple and pretty. So, that brings me on to my next landscape photography tip, and that is circular polarizers. Uh, they work absolutely fantastically for many things. Uh, They'll bring out the blue in the sky by a substantial chunk, and they will also uh, cut the glare in water and allow you to be able to see through water better. And since this is a nice slow spot of the creek, I would like to be able to do that. So I got my circular polarizer on here. So I'm going to flip this to movie mode so that you can see what I'm doing. So this is me turning a circular polarizer. And if you'll notice, like right here, you start being able to see every little rock at the bottom. Here, let's move the focus down there so you can see all the rocks. And then as you start turning it, it adds in the reflection. So if you're trying to get reflection, uh, this will allow you to get the most of it possible. If you're trying to cut through the reflection and see to the bottom of water, it'll also let you do that. Uh, so for this shot, I definitely want to be able to see to the bottom, and I'm going to try to shoot an exposure that'll let this go through. So I'm going to shoot one shot focused on the foreground. I'm uh, definitely going to do some focus stacking for this image. And then one on the mid-ground. And then I am also going to do one focused on the far background. That'll give me three different exposures to shoot this because I really want this shot. I think it should turn out cool. But regardless, here's how it turned out. Okay, so for my next tip, I have come across this gorgeous little shot. It is a bunch of rocks creeping in on this tiny miniature rock waterfall. Uh, I've still got my polarizer on because I want to be able to see the bottom of this because there's a bunch of little grainy rocks in the bottom and I think it'd be really cool to have that nice and clear. But in order to get ISO 100 with a one second exposure, uh, I have to be at F16, which honestly I don't want to do. Yeah, actually, I want to be at f8. Uh, on this lens, the sharpest it gets is f5.6, so going for sharpness, I, sometimes that is beneficial. So instead of my one second exposure, to get this exposed properly, it's at a quarter of a second. So the way I can do a long exposure, even if I have to shoot it at a quarter of a second, Okay, so I have moved my camera to uh, the 10 second delay and it's gonna shoot 10 it's, it's gonna shoot four shots in a row. So at a quarter of a second that'll give me one second exposure. Then what I'm gonna do is in Lightroom, I'm gonna take those images, open them as layers in Photoshop uh, and I stack them for mean. 
And that will also give me a one second exposure. So... I am just gonna focus right on the rock waterfall. And I am gonna shoot this. Okay, so just took four shots. Here is one of them, followed by after a Photoshop edit and them all being merged together. Okay, so I really like the composition from that last shot, and I want to actually get a good shot of it. So that is what I'm going to do here. I, I'm going to, using the same composition, I am going to do this at F16, one second exposure, ISO 100, and I'm going to shoot three different focal points. Okay, let's go back to two second timer. Don't want none of that. Okay, so taking one on the rocks in front, one just a little farther upstream. One at the base of the waterfall. And then I'm also going to take one of the far back foliage just to 100% make sure that I got everything. And that should turn out to be one awesome shot. I'm excited for that. Here it is. Okay, so I have stumbled across another composition I just completely love. Uh, there's these nice mossy rocks in the foreground uh, with this little tiny waterfall behind them. I, I love the moss, I love the texture. I, I've got the polarizer set so I can see through as much of the water as possible. Still getting a little bit of reflection though, but just love this shot. Uh, so I'm definitely gonna shoot this exposure bracketed. I, but before I do that, I, I would like to do a quick lesson on aperture and how much that affects your pictures. So for how much I'm zoomed in, I can only get to f6.3. Th th this lens, it is what it is. Uh, so to get this properly exposed at ISO 100, uh, it's going to be one-fifth of a second. So I'm going to shoot this picture. And then I am going to change my aperture. To, let's go with F32. So in order to get this properly exposed now, I need a five second ex a shutter speed. So upping the aperture allows you to lengthen your shutter speed. It also increases the amount of dynamic range in your picture, and it increases the amount of your image that is in focus. So I'm gonna shoot this five second exposure at F32, I believe. I think that's what I said. If not, sorry. Okay, so got that shot. I'll put them I'll put them both up and show the difference between aperture. I know it's if you have an object closer, it's going to matter a lot more and all and everything you see in these photos will be greatly emphasized. Okay, but now to actually shoot this photo how I want. So I'm kind of liking... I'm going to try to get this to about a one second shutter speed. Uh, which F16 isn't quite enough. Oh, 
Oh, F-18 still even at exp Okay, so I'm going with F-18 and a two-second shutter speed on this. So I'm going to focus once in an object as close as I possibly can. Probably not going to use that photo because I probably want the foreground blurred. So I'm going to focus on the mossy rock off on the right. And then for the next shot, I'm going to focus on the mossy rock on the left. And then I'm going to focus right on the center of the waterfall. And I'm going to take one focused on the leaves up in the background. However, I don't think I want to use that because I think I want the background and the foreground slightly out of focus. Not 100% sure though. I guess we will see. So that is that is the shot. Here it is. I hope I hope you enjoy it. I personally think it's going to turn out gorgeous. Uh, so to be completely honest, I'm not 100% sure. I just keep walking up and down this creek and I just keep finding one composition after another that I just am in love with. I mean, it's nature photography. All of it, it's just so beautiful. Everywhere you look, there is something gorgeous. But with that being said, I've come across another just absolutely gorgeous composition that I really, really want to shoot. And I've got this beautiful overcast day, so I'm getting just amazing light. Okay, so for this shot, what I'm trying to do here, I, I'm trying to get the polarizer set so that I can see as much reflection as possible. I think that is where I'm going to want it. So that should add reflection in. So I definitely want that reflection in focus. So... I'm going to focus on the center part of the reflection and see how that works. And it looks like I'm going to get a 1 and 1 6 shutter speed at f18. Okay, so we're going to shoot that and then I'm going to focus on the rocks. Then I'm going to focus on the top of the waterfall. And then in, just so I have it, I'm shooting one of the very foreground and I'm always and I'm also shooting one of the very background. I personally do not think I want those, but when I get to post processing, I don't want to not have them if I decide I wanted something in focus. Okay, so we have that shot. Here it is. Well, I think this about wraps up the stream photography tips for my trip out at Hard Scrabble Creek here. Uh, if you found this useful, definitely be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And hopefully I will see everyone next time.